Day FM's Fergal Darcy. Joining me on the line, Grammy Award nominee, Brit Award winning multi platinum singer, songwriter, producer, and guitarist, James Bay. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm great, man. What a lovely. What, that was so many lovely words. Thank you. Uh, well, nice, to, nice to speak to you. Well, credit where credit is due. You are back in action, my friend. Brand new single out there, Chew on My Heart. Now, by the title, you'd kind of think, oh, this is, this is a heartbreak song, but it isn't. This is a ballad of love. Right, yeah, it is, to be honest. It's up-tempo and sort of, like, it's kind of got, like, a big sort of drum beat behind it. But, yes, it is essentially, it is absolutely that, lyrically. Um, and I only kind of found this stuff out about these songs afterwards. Like, I, I, I'm i I'm pretty sort of personal and private about my, like, relationship. Um, but it found its way into these songs sometimes, particularly in this case, A Chew On My Heart, without me really realising I was writing about it. I was just kind of exercising and expressing these emotions because they, I guess I wanted to. And um, yeah, Chill My Heart is this big tribute to kind of wanting to just throw your arms around that person you're so madly in love with and be selfish and have them all to yourself. Yeah, like you've been with your other half, Lucy, for 13 years. And this is really kind of, yeah. a, it's a public acknowledgement of, of you guys, your love and your experiences together, which is lovely. It's a lovely sentiment. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a lovely thing to express and I spent I suppose even to this degree just to share a bit you know it's nice to it's something about it but it just feels kind of good and, and there's a there's a there's a great positive energy shared and, and released you know well before this all kicked off you were in Nashville recording in RCA Studio A which is right across the yeah. way from RCA Studio B where Evis would have mm. recorded. This is just before mm. the COVID lockdown and you were kind of putting the finishing touches on the album, which we can expect later mm. this year. But you were mm. actually standing in the same spot where Dolly Parton recorded I Will Always mm. Love You and Jolene. Of course this stuff is going to pour out of you. Honestly, I was told that a half an hour after I walked into the studio, I was stood in the room having a look around going, God, this is an amazing space. And Dave, uh, Dave Cobb, brilliant producer, was telling me about the history of it. And he dropped that fact bomb, and I was like, great, Dave, no pressure then. I'll just uh, give it my best swing at sort of trying to live up to those standards. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You have been busy during lockdown. I'm enjoying some of the stuff that you've been doing. Uh, for instance, Save Our Venues. This is, yeah. this is so important. We're at the risk of losing so many small venues worldwide, really. But you played to an empty room in Almiro, just on London Bridge, and raised 4K. Fair play, very important cause. Thanks, yeah, it, it just... I suppose what was nice about it is it was a step, you know, I spent most of lockdown performing into my sort of phone camera or my, or my, or a zoom on my laptop screen. And then it was a step further to go to a venue, albeit an empty one, a brilliant venue in London bridge called Omira. It's one of the fantastic small venues in uh, smaller venues in, in, in London and in the country. Um, it's about 300 holds. It's always a beautiful, intimate experience. And there's such community developed and, and built in, in these small venues. They're so important. We need to hold on to them. And I wanted to raise awareness and help um, the Save Our Venues campaign in that respect. So, um, yeah, we went there. Uh, I, I streamed it to as many people as wanted to watch it. There was a donate button so you could donate to the cause. And uh, it was uh, it felt like we were getting a little bit closer to sort of coming back to, to proper gigs as we, as we all want to experience them. Yeah, we have got a bit of a weight jet, though, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. However, you have been very good, in particular, to young up-and-coming musicians. Now, a lot of people would know this about you. Your fans would definitely know that, you know, you learned a lot of your stuff from YouTube, but you've been very given of your time over the past <laughs> while. You know, you've given something back to your, your 1.2 million Insta followers. Like, you've been doing free guitar lessons. Uh, yeah, I, I, I taught guitar when I was 18, just after I finished school. I spent a year. I had all sorts of different, like, loads of students... Um, across the year and I was teaching you know it went all right it was never too um, sort of stressful an experience I always kind of enjoyed it uh, so I thought to myself at the beginning of this lockdown can I give you know can, what can I what can I do here I've got this platform I've got these followers I've got these fans um, can I sort of provide something because obviously lots of people in the earlier stages of all this lockdown were sort of sat inside doing like a jigsaw or something which can sort of or watching Joe Wicks one or the other yeah that's it <laughs> and, and poor old Joe's yeah. gone now <laughs> you know but, but yeah that's what they were doing though and pretty much people were kind of trying to find ways to keep themselves busy and you've given something yeah. back to them yeah it was lovely to do it and, and, and it was so lovely to connect with everybody it was so nice to sort of feel that again that my own little community with my fans and anybody who wanted to come in and watch, and obviously they still exist online. You can. We did 24 so far. 
I'm going to be doing number 25 this Friday. Speaking about connections, you've made some serious connections over the past while. I mean, it has <laughs> been a serious graft. You were writing with Brandon Flowers from The Killers and he's comparing some of your sessions to The Beatles at work. That was, that was such a, it was just a wild moment in the session we were writing and I just remember him. I'd brought this kind of verse part, this verse idea, essentially, uh, to the session, uh, something I'd worked up a few days before and he said... Uh, he looked, we'd finished the song, we'd given it a chorus and a bridge and everything, and we were listening back and he was looking across the room smiling as the verse melody went by. He said, man, this is so fantastic, that reminds me of something like the Beatles. And I was like, this is a strange scenario, this is a wonderful place to be, where I'm sort of sat with a complete legend in a room, you know, a hero of mine, Brandon Flowers, uh, and he's referencing the music we've made, he's referencing the Beatles. It's just a bananas moment. You have got loads of celebrity fans, though. Like, Taylor Swift approaches you um, whilst you're supporting cool. Hosier, and you get the gig with her. Mm -hmm. And then Lola, mm. Lola Palooza, for me, is a big one. Like, Chicago, you're there. You come off yeah. stage. The crowd is singing Pink Lemon. All these songs back to you. And Tyler, the creator, is there. Yeah, that was mad. I mean, it was the sort of, sort of the backstage of any festival. You know, everybody's rushing to do some kind of press. And I just sort of got a tap on the shoulder, turned around, there was a bunch of people. And there was this taller dude uh, and he said to me, I just, he said, I saw you on something a couple of years ago. I think it was in the same year, actually. It's Saturday, Saturday Night year. Live with the black guitar and the pink Saturday shirt. Saturday Night Live set. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, the pink shirt, the electric guitar, the slicked hair. He said, I absolutely loved it. He said, just do more of that, please. Wow, wow. What a spectacular story. Well, listen, James, the brand new singles out there, Chew On My Heart. When realistically can we expect this third album? I'm actually excited for you because I've been oh, watching man, your work. You will hear more music before the album and then you will hear the album this year. I don't, we don't have a date yet, but there will, it will be this year, 2020. Well, I look forward to hearing that. James, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you. Nice to speak to you. Virgil Darcy. Weekdays from 2 on Today FM.